Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another one of my videos and welcome if you're new to my channel too. So I've been thinking about ideas for videos and I had an idea that I'd like to revisit makes by particular pattern companies that I've made. Last year I did a video where I talked about all of my dresses I made using Till in the Buttons patterns and I really enjoyed revisiting my Till in the Buttons dress collection and I'll link that video below in case you fancy checking it out. So I thought I'd have a look at other pattern companies and what makes I've made and so I thought I'd start today with all the patterns I've made by Sew so Over at London. So I thought I'd share with you the patterns I've made and how I found them. I thought I'd also share a couple of patterns I've got, a couple of Sew Over It patterns I haven't made yet and why I haven't made them and then also a couple of Sew Over It patterns I've got my eye on for making for the future. So hopefully um, it should be an interesting vlog talking all about um, all patterns Sew so Over It London related. So I thought I'd start with a little bit about Sew so Over It London. They're one of the earlier pattern companies I tried actually I think when I started getting into indie patterns I started with Tilling the Buttons and I was looking around for other pattern companies that had quite nice simple and um, easy to follow instructions and I came across Sew so Over It. They're based in London, they um, have a lot of patterns available um, I think they cater for beginners and intermediates and they also have their stitch school with lots of online classes and tutorials and they have some fabrics they sell too and they try to be quite size inclusive and um, all of their new patterns are, in, um, are released in two size bands that goes from a size 6 up to a size 30 and that's UK sizes. And I really enjoyed sewing some of their patterns. Um, I've got a couple in particular that I've sewn quite a few of so I'm going to share all of those in this video. So I usually start my videos with what I'm wearing and today I thought it would be appropriate to put on one of my favourite Sew Over It makes and this is the first pattern I'm going to talk about and it is the Molly dress and top pattern and it comes from one of Sew Over It's ebooks. Sew Over It have released I think at least three ebooks and they're basically sort of online pattern books and you can download it and you get about five or six patterns included in the ebook and they're quite good value for money and they're often you can get them on special which makes them even better value for money. So I think this one, the Molly dress and top comes from, it's called their City Break Capsule Wardrobe Collection ebook. This is it here. Um, I haven't printed the whole thing out, I've only printed out the Molly dress and top because that's the only pattern I've made from this one yet. But I think it retails at £25, but I had a look back and I got it for £14 when they had one of their special offers on. So it's definitely worth looking out for that. And if there's particularly just one pattern you've got your eye on, I think that £14 isn't that bad if I've only made the Molly top from this one. But this was so over its first um, ebook they released. So I think it's designed to um, include all of the clothes you might want for going away for a weekend break in a lovely city somewhere. So it's got in here a pair of jeans, quite a simple pair of jeans actually. They're called the, I think they're called the Mia jeans. And they look like quite a simple, easy to sew pair of jeans. So I might give them a go at some point because they do look almost like a combination between jeans and leggings, maybe like a jeggings type pattern. There's a coat pattern, there's a skirt, there's a dress. But the reason I got this was because I really like the look of the Molly top and dress. So the Molly top and dress is, I'll show you the line drawings here. It's a jersey dress pattern with a dropped shoulder and then you can either make it as a top here, it's got a fairly wide sort of neckline, or you can turn it into a sort of jumper dress. And I really like the dropped shoulder. I love how um, you can play with stripes. Um, the picture on the front is Lisa Comfort, um, who's the owner of Sew Over It, and she's got a, this lovely sort of stripe effect here where the kind of um, dropped shoulders come together and then the stripes change direction on the sleeves. So yeah, I was really inspired to sew that up having seen lots of lovely stripey versions. The sizing, unfortunately, on this um, ebook is in so over its old size range. So it goes from a size UK 8 to size 20. I don't think it's been re-released to include their larger size range they now release their patterns in. So the largest size on this goes up to a bust of 45 inches. But I really like the look of the Molly dress, dress and top, and I'm glad I bought this ebook because I've made a few versions. They recommend for fabrics, for the top they recommend you make it in a lightweight jersey, like a cotton jersey or a viscose jersey or something like that. And then for the dress they make, recommend you make it in more of a medium weight, like a ponty. So I'll show you my versions. Oh, before I show you my versions, I thought I'd mention what sizing I make my Molly um, tops and dresses in. So the smallest size on this ebook is a size 8, so I went for that. So that is designed for bust 33 inches, waist 26 inches and hips 36 inches. And I'm 32, 26, 36, so 
pretty much there, um, only one inch difference in the bust. And I found that size is absolutely fine on me. And I think so over do mention their patterns that they don't have a huge amount of ease in their patterns. They aren't intended to be oversized. That's not their sort of style and aesthetic. So I thought that'd be fine to go for that size for me. So I've made a few top versions and a couple of dress versions. So I'll share my top versions first. And I've all of my top versions I've made um, in um, cotton jersey and they're all stripy actually. <laughs> so you can tell I love a molly top in the stripe fabric. This is my first version here in this lovely um, navy and blue cotton jersey fabric. It's quite a nice fabric. It's got a sort of little speckle to it, which I think is quite pretty. So it's just a basic standard molly top. The only adjustments I made to the size eight were to lengthen the sleeves by one inch and also lengthen the body by one inch. Oh, and I thought I'd mention also the top has a really nice um, sort of dipped hem feature. So it kind of, it comes down a little bit in a sort of, um, yes, yeah, a little bit of a curve at the bottom, which is a nice feature too. You can probably see that from how the stripes are sitting at the bottom there. And yes, yeah, so this is my first version. You can see it's got the nice diamond shape stripes on the shoulder. Um, and I really love wearing it. It's a really relaxed, comfy top to wear. It's not super tight fitting. It's a bit loose in the body. I'll see if I can find a picture of me wearing one of my three Molly tops I've got so you can see how the fit is. But that's my first one. I do like those colours. My second one, I made in one of Tilly and the Buttons um, jersey fabrics they released. They released their um, jersey fabric collection quite a while ago, I think. And I couldn't resist this fabric here. I thought it was really pretty. Excuse, it's got some, um, it's been in the drawer. I need to iron this before I wear it next. So it's really pretty white based fabric with these sort of pastel coloured stripes on. And then I had a bit of fun with playing with stripes on the neckband and made the stripes go the other way on the neckband. And again, it's got this lovely sort of V on the sleeve, a nice stripy sleeve. That's my second top version. And then my final one, it's another stripy version. And this one I made in a yellow fabric here. Again, I played with the stripes on the neckline. And this sort of, um, it's a bit more substantial cotton jersey. I got this one from Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop. I also got the first, the navy stripy one from Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop, and I'll link them down below. The Tilly and the Buttons fabric came direct from Tilly and the Buttons, I think. Um, but yeah, this is my final one. It's a bit more of a substantial cotton jersey and it works well still, I think, even though it's slightly a heavier weight cotton jersey. So yeah, I just enjoy wearing them all. They are really comfy and relaxed to wear. It is quite a wide neckline, so I do find, um, particularly for the dresses, if I'm wearing a t-shirt underneath like I am today, I do need to go for one of my t-shirts that has a wide neckline too. But I guess you could always bring it in a little bit if you wanted. But yeah, those are my versions of the Molly Top. And it sews up really nicely. Um, the only slightly tricky bit, I guess, is getting the jersey neckband to lie flat. But I found that goes in okay. Um, other than that, you sew the sleeves on the flats. So you don't sew them in the round. So it all sews up really nicely. It's quite a nice, speedy, simple make. So those are my three top versions. And then I've made two dress versions. And the first one is the one I'm wearing. This is my only non-stripy molly. <laughs> this is another fabric I got from Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop. They have some really nice um, stretch fabrics on there. And this is a French terry fabric, so you can see on the inside, I'll try and show you. It's got that sort of loop back jersey texture to it. So it's a little bit more substantial, medium weight fabric, so it works perfectly for a dress. I'm not a big fan of Ponty, because it often has a polyester content. I'm not a big fan of that fabric on my skin. So yeah, I find that French terry works really well for the Molly dress too. So this one, you can't have any, see any stripe matching and you can't maybe see quite as easily the dropped shoulder feature. But it's a really comfy dress. I'll put a picture up of how I look wearing it today. I've just teamed it with a pair of nice cosy tights because it's quite chilly today. But it's a really relaxed one to wear and I think it works really well hanging around the house with a pair of leggings on and your slippers. But it's also really nice for going out and about too. And this one does make me think of spring with these pretty flowers on. And then my other version I made, this was actually my first... This might be my first Molly I made, um, dress or top based, um, is this one here. Again, I made this in a um, French terry type fabric. It's got that loop back texture on it. This fabric, I think, um, is still available in a lot of places. It's one I've seen around for years and it comes in a few different colourways. I think I got this one from Sew Me Sunshine and I'll link the website down below. And I've seen this in a navy with a um, sort of peachy, pinky colour stripe. And I've seen it in the mustard colour with a navy thin stripe as well. So kind of the reverse of this one. But yeah, this is my first one I made. Um, and again, it's got the stripe matching down the shoulder. It's quite satisfying doing that stripe matching, actually. Um, and there, yes, it's a dress version. This actually, I think it might have got a little bit shorter because I've washed it quite a few times now. So it's almost like a tunic rather than a dress, this one. So I often wear this with like a thick pair of leggings underneath. And it's one I generally wear around the home these days because it is on the short side. But I still love wearing it. They're just really comfy, relaxed dresses to wear. 
and perfect for layering up with a t-shirt underneath to keep you cosy. So that's my first pattern that I really love by Sew so Over It, the Molly Dress and Top, which comes from their ebook, The City Break Capsule Wardrobe. And I do, I would really like to sew another pattern from this book too. So I think that'll be on my list to make at some point. Maybe the, the jeans pattern, because I like the idea of making quite a relaxed summery pair of jegging style jeans. So the Molly Dress and Top was the first Sew so Over It pattern I tried and the second one I tried was a slightly more challenging make. I think having felt comfortable that I really liked so over its instructions I thought I'd try something a little bit more tricky and it's a really pretty dress pattern. It's this one here. It's the so over it penny dress. I'll show you the line drawings on this one. It's a li really lovely summer dress designed for woven fabrics. It's got some really pretty details to it. So yeah, it's a summery dress with a 1950s inspired shape and a little bit of a dropped shoulder. It's got a button down bodice and it's got a flat collar. So I think they say it's um, not super challenging because you haven't got to add the, the um, collar stand in. So it's a little bit more of a simple collar shape. It's got this pretty sort of ruching on the shoulders here. Then it's got an elasticated waist and quite a pretty midi skirt that's a fairly full skirt. So it's really lovely details to it. And because it's got an elasticated waist, you can just pull it on over your head. So I think they say it's kind of a great sort of starter shirt dress style pattern to try because it hasn't got darts hasn't got the full collar stand um, and the fit isn't too critical because it's got an elasticated waist. And this one, I've got the old pattern here. I bought it quite a while ago when I first started sewing, but the pattern size range has been updated on this one now. So whereas I've got the size 8 to 20, it's now been extended. So it starts from a UK 6 and goes up to a UK 30. So in terms of fabric recommendations, the penny dress, so over it recommend lightweight woven fabrics with drape. So rayons, crepes, or a lightweight cotton, like a lawn or a voile. And the only slight downside to this pattern, well, I guess it's not exactly a downside, but something to be aware of, is it is quite a fabric hungry pattern, I think because of the volume in the skirt mainly. Um, for a size six, UK six to 12, if you have a 1.4 meter wide fabric, you, it says the pattern says you need 3.2 meters, which when I started sewing, that seemed like quite a lot of fabric to me, although I think I might've used a little bit less and I did shorten the skirt a bit, which would take, a bit of the fabric requirements out and for me um this was quite one of my early um dresses i sewed and because it had a few details i thought would be a bit trickier like buttonholes um, and inserting a collar i didn't want to spend too much on the fabric so i went for a quite reasonably priced very reasonably priced cotton voile i got from minerva i thought voile would be good because it was cheaper than a cotton lawn but less slippery than a rayon type fabric so I got a really reasonably priced foil from Minerva and I didn't know what I was buying when I bought it. I just went based on the pattern recommendations and I thought, well, it's not too expensive. So I'll just see how I got, get on with it. I wasn't sure how opaque it'll be or anything, but it's really lovely fabric. Actually, it's got a very soft feel to it and it's very lightweight and floaty. So I think it's perfect for a penny dress, lovely and summery. So I'll show you my first version and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I was quite nervous trying it, but I was glad to have a fairly reasonably priced fabric. And I did find the sew over it instructions really great and held my hand through the process of sewing this dress. And it did give me more confidence for moving on to sewing other shirt dresses. So it's a great one, I think, to give a try as a kind of beginner shirt dress pattern that looks really pretty too. So here is my version, my first version. And I made it in this really pretty um, voile in this deep green colour, which is not often a colour I go for, but I really love wearing this one. I've worn it a lot. See, it's hard to tell because the fabric's quite busy, but it's got this little ruching detail across the shoulder here. It's got the flat collar, which is quite nice actually, because it's not too much fabric around your neck for a hot summer's day. And it's got these really pretty, cute little pink buttons that I also got from Minerva that are quite tiny on the front bodice. And it's got the elasticated waist and this lovely kind of full swishy skirt that's really nice to kind of twirl in. So that is my first version. In terms of sizing, so as I mentioned, I've got the old pattern. The smallest size is a size eight, which as with the Molly top is for a bust 33, waist 26, hip 36. So I went with that um, sizing for my version and I found it's come out fine. It doesn't feel too oversized in the bodice. I like the fit. But I did make a couple of adjustments for my versions. First of all, I lengthened the bodice. I think I lengthened it by about an inch or so because it looked like it came up a bit short um, when I looked at other people's patterns on Instagram and had a look at where it fell. And I know I've got quite a long body, so I lengthened the bodice slightly. And then I chopped quite a lot of length off the um, skirt. For my first version here, I made it as per the pattern and it came out kind of midi length and I didn't really like that length on me. So I think I must have taken a good five or six inches off to bring it to above the knee and I much prefer that length. And then I went on to make another version and I just actually adjusted the pattern piece so I didn't need as much fabric and I didn't need to adjust it later. 
But I put a picture up of me wearing this version so you can see what it looks like on. It's a really lovely dress to wear in summer, I think, because it keeps you lovely and cool with sort of open um, sleeves and just the light floaty fabric and the fact that the dress doesn't cling to your legs really because it's kind of nice and full. But equally, it sort of covers you up as well. So if you're in the sun, you don't need to worry about getting burnt shoulders or anything like that, which I do get <laughs> if I have them out. So that's my first version. I'll show you my second version. And I love my first version in a voil so much, I actually went on to make my second version in another voil I got from Minerva. And for this one, I went for this really cute pink floral fabric. It's a slightly different print to the first one, I think. Um, it's got, yeah, sort of pastel pink base with these sort of pretty yellows and mauves and sage green on. And I got these little cute little yellow buttons to kind of bring out the yellow in the flowers. So I made pretty much exactly the same dress this time. The only thing I think I did slightly better on this version than my first version is... I let the skirt hang for a few days before I hemmed it. I think when my first version, I don't know if the pattern mentions you need to let it hang or whether I was a bit too enthusiastic and just wanted to get it all ready and finished. But I didn't let it hang and the skirt now could probably do with a little bit of levelling at this stage. I don't think it hangs exactly the same length all the way around. I still love wearing it though. For this version, I did let it hang and I was much more careful about levelling the hem. So I definitely recommend if you're making this pattern that do to spend a few days letting the skirt drop a little bit because it definitely does and you want to make sure you have a nice even hem all the way around. But that's my second version and I reached them both a lot when it's summer. I didn't really get much of a chance to wear them last summer because the weather was so bad, but fingers crossed I'll be able to enjoy wearing them this summer. For the um, penny dress pattern, the only one slight little niggle I have in terms of the construction of this pattern is somehow the construction around the underarm seam ends up with this um, little seam bit at the bottom of the sleeve not being finished the best. The rest of the dress ends up finished beautifully, but there's, I think that's a little bit of a weak point in the dress and I've had to go back on my versions and kind of reinforce that little seam there because it started to come apart because of how it's uh, made. So I definitely would watch out for that if you're making this dress, just to make sure you reinforce the little underarm seam to make sure that it does wear well and doesn't come apart a little bit there. So... That's just the one little thing I found with the finishing of the dress that I needed to go back and sort of fix later on. But otherwise, it's a really lovely pattern and a perfect one for a summery day. Oh, and I'll try to find a photo of my pink version too. And if I can, I'll put it up here so you can see how that one looks on me too. So the next sew over it pattern I went on to make is a bit more of a wintry one. And it's one of their skirt patterns. And you might have heard me talking about this pattern before if you've been watching my videos for a while. It's a really pretty one. And it is their tulip skirt pattern. And there's Lisa Comfort wearing a tulip skirt on the front of the um, pattern instructions. But I'll show you the line drawings because it shows the details off on this skirt a bit more. You can either make it as a mini skirt or a knee length skirt. And it's designed to be quite a fitted skirt that fits your natural waist. And it's got this sort of contoured waistband to kind of hug against your body shape. And it's got these really pretty slanted pleats at the front of the skirt, which give this really pretty tulip shape. At the back, it's got an invisible zip and it's got darts too. This one is only available in, so over its old size range, it hasn't been extended, at least not yet. So it goes from a size UK 8 to a size UK 20. So the largest size is for waist 38 inches and hips 48 inches. And it's designed to be made in medium to heavyweight fabrics. So the pattern recommends um, medium to heavyweight cottons, wools or crepes. But yeah, it's a really nice pattern and I love wearing my tulip skirt. I made the size 8 on this pattern, which is for a waist of 26 inches and a hips of 36 inches. And it fits me just right at both the waist and hips. So it's pretty true to size, I'd say this pattern is. So I'll show you my version. I've only got one version that I wear. I did make a previous version and I made it in a slightly lighter weight fabric and it never really hung right. It was a sort of more of a baby cord that was quite drapey. So I never got the really great tulip shape with that one. Um, but yes, yeah, so I remade it. And this is my version I do wear a lot. And I made it in this um, Robert Kaufman Ventana cotton twill fabric. So you can see it's got that twill texture on. So it's got a nice bit of body and structure this fabric and holds the pleats well, as you can see. And it's a really nice one to wear. You can see the invisible zip at the back there. I find the instructions for this pattern are really great for inserting an invisible zip and I often revisit them if I'm looking at an invisible zip on another pattern. So I do like so its instructions and how clear they are. But yeah, this is my version in this really pretty red colour. I think this fabric is still in stock where I got it, which is Sew Me Sunshine. So I'll link it down below if I can find it there. But it's a really nice make. It comes together pretty quickly, actually. Um, it's not lined, but I guess you could always add a lining if you wanted. I often wear it with just a little um, slip underneath. It's got pockets too, and I made my pockets in this really pretty um, fabric. It's a cotton lawn fabric, and I made a, a, day, a Christmassy day dress in this by the Avid Seamstress originally, and I had a little bit left over for these pocket bags. 
And I made as per the pattern with no adjustments in the mini length version. The only adjustment I did make was I changed the pocket bag piece because I find the pocket bag piece for this pattern is a bit of a funny shape. And in my first version, I never found the pocket bags that usable. So yeah, just a bit of a funny shape. So I borrowed a pocket bag from another pattern and I also raised the pocket slightly, which required a bit of adjustment, but I raised them slightly just to make them a more comfortable height for me. So yeah, I use the pockets more in this version. But I really love this version. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like. It's a really nice comfy skirt to wear and I think it goes with quite a lot of things in my wardrobe in this red colour. It works quite well with like a blouse or something a bit more dressy but it's also great with a chunky jumper to make it more casual with a pair of boots too. So that is my Zoe Brick Tulip skirt. Um, I kind of have thought about making another one but I think one's enough because I enjoy wearing this one and it goes with quite a lot of things. The final Zoe favorite pattern that I've made is one of their knit dress patterns and when it was released I thought it had some really pretty details and I really wanted to give it a try and it is their Georgie dress and I'll show you the line drawings and the pretty details and it's a wrap dress and that's not something I often wear so it was new for me to try one but I thought I would give it a go it's got some really pretty details it's got this almost ballet style wrap bodice and it's got pleating at the side here where the um the um wrap is sort of gathered into the side seam which is a really pretty detail and it's fully lined as well the bodice which I think is a really nice feature and then there's two different skirt options. It's either this three quarter circle skirt and that's designed to be made in a heavier weight fabric that I guess will hold the shape like a ponty. And there's also a gathered skirt option here too. And I think it's a midi length, both of them. And the gathered skirt's designed, um, this version's designed for more drapey fabrics like a viscose jersey. This pattern's available in so over its full size range. So it goes from UK six to UK 30. And also what's cool about it is there's elastic sewn into both the waistband and the neckline. And the elastic that's sewn into the neckline, it goes in really well actually. It's a really nice way of sewing it and it makes sure that the, um, the both the wrap sides sort of hold their shape and don't gape. So it's really clever how that's sewn in. So it's the construction on this one's really good and I really enjoyed sewing it. In terms of sizing, um, I got the old size pattern before it was extended. So as usual, I made the size 8 um, for bust 33, waist 26, hips 36. And that fit me nicely. The only adjustment I made was I lengthened the bodice by one and a half inches because from my previous experience, the sew-over-it bodices come up a bit short on me. And from having a look around, having a little play with the pattern piece, I thought one and a half inches was a good adjustment. So I had to adjust slightly how the pleat sat at the side. I think I might have added an, an extra pleat to take into account the extra length of the bodice. And I shortened the skirt a lot. I actually originally made my version just below the knee um, and then I ended up going on to shorten it to above the knee because even the below the knee, which was shorter than the pattern, just felt a bit too long for me. And the above the knee did feel better. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing the dress so you can see what it looks like. I made mine in an art gallery viscose jersey that I got from Minerva in a deep green colour. It was a really pretty, really nice viscose jersey, really comfy to wear. But actually, I don't actually have this dress anymore. I gave it away to a friend because it just did not feel like me. Like I mentioned, it was my first time making a wrap style dress. I tried wearing it a few times. I tried adjusting the skirt length. I wore it out. It just didn't feel like me at all. Um, but it was a really lovely dress. So it was nice to be able to gift it to somebody else so it didn't go to waste. And I'm glad to have tried the pattern. Um, but yeah, it's just not quite quite my style, I guess. Um, but it is a really lovely pattern. So if you like a wrap dress, I definitely recommend this one. So those are all of the Sew Over It patterns I have sewn to date. Um, but I also have two more Sew Over It patterns in my pattern collection that I haven't sewn yet. And these are standalone patterns that I bought on their own. They're not like the extra patterns I got with the ebook that I've got. I think I got them both when they had PDF sales on the Sew Over It website because they often do really good PDF pattern sales. But I thought I'd share with you what those two patterns are and why I haven't sewn them to date. And the first one, I haven't got a print out of it because I haven't got around to thinking about sewing yet, so I'll have to put up line drawings, is the Sew Over It Ultimate Wrap Dress. And I'll put up a picture so you can see what it looks like. This is a proper wrap dress. I guess the Georgie dress I was talking about before is just a wrap bodice. And it's not actually something you can wrap around because it's kind of then sewn into the skirt. This is a full wrap dress designed for light to medium weight jersey fabrics and it's got a tie to kind of hold it in place. And this is one of Sew Over It's older patterns, so it only comes in their old size, the UK 8 to 20 size range. And I got this pattern quite a long time ago before I got the Georgie dress. And I think I thought about making it. I never got around to it. And then the Georgie dress pattern came along and I thought I like that look of that one better and I like the little details better on that one. So I gave that one a go. 
And then I wasn't quite sure after that, like I mentioned, that wrap dresses were, were me, so I never got around to making the ultimate wrap dress. So I think it's one that will probably stay in my PDF collection and it might never get made for me. I don't know whether I may... I'll keep it, obviously, it's just on my computer. Um, I might end up selling it for a friend at some point in the future, I really don't know. But um, it's unfortunate I can't sell it on to someone else because it's a PDF because it's not one I would use for myself, I think, anymore. I thought I'd mention on that one, though, one cool thing is that it comes with a free a maternity hack. So I thought it'd be a great dress if you were at work and pregnant and it would be quite a nice dressy one to wear to the office. So I thought that was quite cool. It had that maternity hack added in. I thought I'd mention that in case that is relevant for you. Then I've got one more sew over it pattern that I bought again on one of their PDF sales that's still sitting on my computer. I haven't printed it out. It's unused. And this is a more of a summery one. And it's another one of their older patterns. And it is their Doris dress. And again, I'll have to put up line drawings because I haven't printed it out. So I'll put the line drawings up here. As I mentioned, it's one of the older dresses, so it's another one that's only available in their old size range, which is the UK size 8 to size 20. But it's quite a pretty 1950s inspired summer dress. It's got a little scoop neckline and a semi-fitted bodice. And you get into the bodice by a concealed side seam zip. There's also a, You can also add an optional button down front on the bodice too. It's got little floaty grown on sleeves. It's got some sort of bust pleating detail and it's got a fluted panelled skirt. Um, which you can either make as a below the knee or above the knee option. So it's got some really interesting, pretty details on this dress. And there are a few things I haven't done before. I've never inserted an um, invisible zip into a side seam. So I'm quite interested how that construction would go, because it's something new for me. But it's one of those patterns where, um, oh, I should mention the fabrics actually. It's designed for lightweight woven fabrics with some drapes. So I guess the fabrics you would choose for summer, like a lightweight cotton, like a lawn or a voil, or a rayon similar to the penny dress. But yeah, it's another one of these patterns I got when it was on special. And then other patterns took my eye that were perhaps more my style and I never got around to making it. And it's another one that I'm not sure I will make. So again, it might sit languishing on my computer, which is a real shame because it has got some really pretty details. But I'm just not sure if it's really quite me. And I guess the more I've sewn, the more I've started to think about my style and what I reach for my wardrobe and what I like to wear. And the more I've become more clear on, yeah, what, what I'm kind of going to go for and what I'm realistically going to wear. But it's a really pretty dress, so it's a bit of a shame that I haven't had the chance to sew it. So those are two sew over it patterns that I've bought that may end up languishing on my computer forever, which is a bit of a shame. But I thought I'd also mention two other patterns from sew over it that I haven't got, but I do really like the look of, so they're on my list of things maybe to think about sewing in the future. And the first pattern comes from sew over its most e recent ebook, which is their summer dreaming ebook, which I think they released either last summer or the summer before. I'm not sure. I've kind of lost track of time, particularly with COVID and the lockdowns and things. I feel like time's kind of blurred a little bit. It's a really lovely ebook though, designed for going on a summer break. It's got quite a few beautiful patterns in there. So I think if I bought this ebook, well, firstly, I'd try and get it on one of their special offer days, but I think there's probably more than one pattern I would like to try in there. But the one that's particularly caught my eye that I quite like to give a go is their Sorrento jacket. And I'll put up line drawings so you can see what it looks like. And it's described by Sew Over It as a quintessential denim jacket. So it's got all the classic denim jacket features, um, front and back yokes, chest pockets, a collar, cuffs, waistbands, uh, waistband tabs, and lots of top stitching. And I've seen loads of really cool versions of the Sorrento jacket, and I've heard loads of good things about how good the instructions are and how well it sews up. And I really like the idea of giving it a go. It's not something I've sewn before. And I do have one ready to wear denim jacket that I bought a few years ago and it's a kind of light coloured denim colour and I wear it a lot in summer and it fits really well it happens to be a really great fit that one but I think it's really hard to find any more that have a really great fit because it's that sort of thing where you need the right fit on the body and the length of the arms and everything so I do like the idea of making my own one so maybe when it gets around to summer and I start seeing those kind of summery fabrics coming through I might get some inspiration there and maybe think about buying that pattern I thought I'd also mention that ebook has the full sew over its size range. So it goes from a UK 6 to UK 30 sizing options available, which is really cool too. So yeah, that's definitely one on my would like to make list. And the other sew over it pattern that I've got my eye on is their Hubie leggings pattern. And again, I'll put a picture up. Um, I'm a big fan of leggings. I use them when I go out running. I, I use kind of ones I bought in the shops that are kind of made out of active wear style jersey. But I also really love a pair of leggings for hanging around the house teamed with a dress like this Molly dress in a kind of cotton jersey, something a bit softer, more relaxed. And today I've always bought ready to wear leggings, but I do find they wear out quite quickly. 
So I'd like the idea of being able to make my own and making them just in the right colours or whatever I want. And I've heard some good things about the Hubie leggings pattern. It's quite a simple, straightforward leggings pattern. It's got no outer side seam to the leggings, which is quite a nice feature, I think. I think it's also got a couple of different waistbands option available and ones that are for more simple waistband and one that you can kind of use for colour blocking, which might be cool. Again, this pattern comes in the full 6 to 30 size range, which is great and really size inclusive. So yeah, I really like the idea of making my own leggings at some point, and I'll definitely consider this pattern. Although I think there are a couple other legging patterns on the market too. I know Megan Nielsen have re-released their Virginia legging patterns recently with loads of different options and features. So when I get to the point where my shop-bought leggings start to wear out, I think I'll have a little research and decide which legging pattern I'll make. But the Hubie leggings are definitely one of the ones I will be considering. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about the Sew Over It London patterns I've made and the patterns I've got that I haven't made and why, and also the patterns I might like to make in the future. I've really enjoyed having a look back over my Sew Over It makes and having a look in my pattern library and figuring out what I haven't made and thinking about why I haven't made it and also having a look on the Sew Over It website and maybe planning a little bit for the future. I really um, rate Sew Over It as a pattern company. I think their instructions are really great and they're always bringing out new patterns. I think they bring out one per month, so it's always really interesting to see what they're bringing out next. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And also, if you'd like me to make more of this type of video, I would love it if you'd let me know in the comments below too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye.